G'day mate, welcome to episode 11 of our definitive guide to Factoria. First thing we want to do is we want to find our workshop. Try and line this thing up and start a build. Automation, that's what I want. So we want to paste down this and we want to see what new things we've unlocked. We've unlocked that chest again. Yep. Uh, we've unlocked research. Okay. Research, 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 research. You. Uh, 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 um, 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 but that, oh, uh, there we go. We can grab some faster, no, that's it. Uh, faster inserters. Uh, we can unlock some rocket fuel just in case we need to launch any rockets and we'll leave it at that. So, a couple of things we've unlocked uh, and I'd love, well, let's just use a T2 or something. Let's be honest. All right. So, we have our first stack inserter. So, a stack inserter basically grabs more things at once. As you can see, the hand stack size is one plus three, whereas if we look at one of these guys, their size is one. Really? Bonuses. Inserter capacity two, stack inserter capacity four. So these guys are gonna move four items, these guys are gonna move two items. Uh, unfortunately, for reasons that I cannot explain, it is asking for a stack inserter to make stack inserters, which is not gonna happen. So obviously we're gonna use a fast inserter. But yes, these guys require red circuits. They also require a ton of gears. That is exactly actually why it's designed to use one of them because that puts gears in way faster. Um, as you can see, this guy is a little bit slow, so we might even do that as well. That's a bit better. There you go. Okay, so we unlocked those. We've unlocked these guys. These are useless for the moment, but they are speed modules. Okay, speed modules are gonna go into this machine, as we can see from all their ghosted inserters. Uh, we don't know what that machine is. Well, I know what that machine is, but I'm not telling you guys what that machine is. On top of that, we have another one down here. This is RoboPorts. RoboPorts are gonna be really important for robots, which needs a whole bunch of stack inserted. So let's empty that box and load this guy up. So those two, I actually wanna do those two instead. So I'm gonna remove that belt because that's an addition for Mark II of the blueprint. Uh, and a steel chest. Okay, so RoboPorts are super duper duper important. They actually charge the robots. The robots are going to be the automated thing that we're going to hopefully get this episode. Hopefully. Uh, and they'll actually start building the base for us. On top of that, we've unlocked a few more things down here. We have train signals, train tracks, uh, train all the train things. So we're now into train town. Uh, power pole, power pole, power pole, more power poles. Uh, uh, we've also unlocked the box district, more power poles, and that's about it. Okay, so many power poles, more power poles. Okay, all right, so we've got a few belts to run. All right, let's go with house my supplier belts. Okay. Let's get all these undergrounds. Oh, that needs a red underground. Okay, that's not going to happen. Oh, red undergrounds. They've been unlocked too, haven't they? Yes, they have. Okay. Uh, you, give me more of them. So, we've unlocked red belts. Red belts are belts that run at twice the speed. Twice the speed is great because it moves twice as much junk. Uh, catches, they cost a lot more iron. A lot more. Okay, so if we look at, in our crafting menu, if we look at a yellow belt, a yellow belt costs three iron and you get two yellow belt for that. So they cost one and a half iron each. A red belt moves twice as much stuff, but costs 11 and a half iron every belt. That's a lot. That's a lot of iron to move twice the amount of stuff. So buyer be warned. Once you get these on, um, as you can see, well, our gear belt has just been decimated. Our gear belt obviously... No, our gear belt's doing fine. Our iron belt is bad because I didn't put in you guys. Copy, paste. Uh, paste. 
paste. Uh, oh, I'm missing one here. Ha! Huh. Okay, so that should force everything down, which probably means this belt's going to be empty, close to. Uh, we might even actually put down another one of them. Uh, that failed. Uh, actually, now that we've upgraded the assemblers, we might actually find the inserters are too slow. Hey, the inserters are too slow. Fast inserters all around. Uh, okay, with fast inserters going... Yeah, you can't get stuff out fast enough. Cool, more fast inserters. Uh, turns out I'm one fast inserter shot. I will handcraft that like a plate. All right. So that fixed our gear problem. Uh, the catch is we're still going to have an issue that this is going to use almost a whole belt of gears. Whatever's left over is going to go to here and it's not going to make it anything past our workshop because we're trying to make 500, just 500 uh, red belt to start with. It's also one of the reasons why I don't, re I recommend you don't try and upgrade this um, past like your, your crappy inserters, uh, crappy assembly machines. You can upgrade all these to start going to tier two assemblers and even tier three assemblers. But early on, you're gonna find that um, it just eats all the resources and you don't have any resources to do anything else. Okay, so we wanna get train tracks up and running, obviously. Um, we don't need them now, but you never know when, when we're gonna need them in the future. Uh, put that there, that there. Okay, so there's a belt here that needs to go down. There's a copper belt all the way up here that is probably gonna be needed for something sooner or later. So we'll drag that down too. This is our red circuits and green circuits. This is, I have no idea what some of this stuff is sometimes. Uh, that steel. Uh, steel comes in for train tracks. It also comes in for the train stations themselves. We're gonna need, I need some steel myself more steel boxes uh and also iron sticks so iron sticks go into train stops they also go into train tracks along with stone we don't have stone yet no we don't okay so we need to do some backtracking go find some stone which is designed to come in on that belt so the easiest spot to get stone and it's a little bit of a cop out but it's the easiest spot to get stone and you don't need all that much is from right here. Uh, using some undergrounds to filter the belts, we can plug that in there and plug that in there and collect stone right there. This is what the smelter does not use. So if, and I will say this, if your stone brick is running as fast as possible, there's gonna be no stone left on the belt. The chances that you're running stone brick as fast as possible is slim, very, very slim. Uh, we want to come in here-ish. So let's get our team of underground. Team of undergrounds in place, craft some more because I just ran out. And I know the workshop is right there, but I just, I, I just, there are times when you just want to get stuff done and it's just quicker just to handcraft one than it is to deal with anything else. Okay, so we're going to bring our stone in right here. That'll fix that problem. We're going to also grab a stack of those, uh, a stack of those, half a stack of those. Yes. All right, so continuing down through our workshop. Where were we? We're up to train tracks. Train tracks should now run. Uh, we're also going to want... Train signals, oh, that's a nothing. We want uh, the packing district to run as well. We'd love some train tracks. They're combinators, I don't care about those, so we're gonna leave those for the moment. Uh, iron into there, steel into there. Uh, all right, so that's signals. 
so that's that running. That also requires steel for not signals and not signals. Whatever this is on the end requires steel. Uh, no, these guys require steel. So we have unlocked, haven't got the built yet. Uh, we have unlocked the packing district, which will give us things like steel chests. Uh, very important to have some steel chests. At the same time, it'll give us passive provider chests and it will also give us, I need a passive provider chest, right? How does that work? That's definitely wrong. Okay. Uh, it'll give us passive provider chests. Passive provider chests basically let you put something in a box that then robots can access. Um, but as you can see, it's definitely working terribly well because our green circuit belt is dead. Why is that green circuit belt dead? Uh, because we're not making enough of them. Because there's no copper. Because again, JD didn't put in the things he's meant to put in because he's been lobbing things around partially for a while. Okay, uh, we continue this along, which is gonna come down here. So once we get a lot of things upgraded with passive providers, it means we can have the robots start making part of the base for us. Uh, nope, I'm out of chests, grab those. Uh, nope, I don't need that one yet. There's a radar in the blueprint, put down the radar. Uh, what else do you need? You need steel, which goes to there. Uh, I can't build those chests yet, so there's an indication I need to hand feed that. All right, so we need some red belt to get some of this stuff done. So we're going to go up here and physically fetch the red belt because our red undergrounds, which are actually really, really helpful. Again, they cost a lot of iron, uh, 97 and a half iron for one set of red undergrounds compared to 17 for the yellow version. So like I said, some things are super expensive, but your red undergrounds do carry one massive advantage and that being uh, yellow underground. We already know stretches from there to there. The red underground, see what I mean? Two tiles. Two tiles can make the world of a difference sometimes. Um, in fact, actually I had it on my cliffs one of the belts couldn't pass through and I had to zigzag it up and around and all sorts of things. If I had two extra tiles, it would have reached. So as you can see with our workshop, uh, this is a point where I actually needed those extra two tiles to make things cleaner and stretch that a little bit further. Um, so we're gonna start putting in some of these red undergrounds just to get our gears further through the build. Uh, you're missing a power pole and then, oh, you're also missing green circuits it seems. Uh, put that to there, that to there. Okay, so you're running, you're running, you're running. We're done, we're dusted. We leave all this alone for the moment. I'm going to put those back because I definitely don't want them in my inventory. Uh, you can go back and you can go back. Okay, with that out of the way and me putting in copper. That's what I had to do. Copper. Uh, me putting in those... We should be good to go. Uh, they're not needed. Cool. All right, today's episode. Today's episode. We want to get batteries up and running. Um, is it too late to run the intro 13 minutes in? Uh, where do I leave that acid pipe? Oh, there's no gears for red science because the workshop's stealing everything. Mm. Okay, acid pipe, acid pipe, acid pipe. Oh no, we already dragged the acid pipe across. We've got 14 chemical plants. That's enough for right now. We're gonna get batteries up and running. I did double power off screen. Um, as I said, we would. We did blueprint it down over here and hooked it in and it is running actually we're running well past one power plant well into our second power plant so i'm really glad i got that done otherwise we'd be suffering brownouts right now all right so we want to have batteries batteries are a really simple recipe how many say i had on me uh i think it was a few more there we go that'll do us 
Uh, nope, we want to have those oop, tight up against one another. We'll put that one there. We'll put that one there. We want you to do batteries. Hello? Oh, I turned off alt mode by mistake. Okay, that explains so much. All right, we're going to take our pipes. We're going to hook our pipes down to wherever we left this acid pipe because it came through the red circuit build and popped out right there. So we're going to hook up our pipes, get our acid up to uh, batteries. Now, I may need to extend this build if we find a desire for more batteries. But batteries are really easy. They need iron, they need copper, and they need acids. So it's one of those easiest recipes in the world situation. Uh, we're just gonna put in inserters for bringing in our iron and copper. And then a couple of longhand inserters on the outside for bringing out our batteries. Nothing more complicated than that. I like easy builds. Uh, okay, uh, pipe right down the middle. Uh, power poles right along the outside. Hook that into the next power. Run those power poles. Voila. Uh, so we need iron and we need copper. So you're going to be a belt. You're going to be an output belt. Oops. That's definitely not right. Uh, that's the input belt. And that's the output belt. Okay. So we need to bring in iron and copper. And look, honestly, I want to aim for like right about the middle somewhere. So we're going to bring in copper here. Uh, we're going to bring in iron. Bear with me. Bear with me. Uh there to there then I'm going to slam those two together so we get a mixed belt that failed right copy paste because uh, if I don't start doing this right now I'm going, to, I'm going to keep forgetting so that'll give us our mixed belt straight away which we're then going to bring down here and then I'll put in another splitter to split it both left and right And that should be batteries. As quick and easy as that. And best bet is I can even put in these undergrounds without a single hassle. Okay. Uh, one more problem down. Now, with the tech we've unlocked in the last couple of episodes, uh, I want to get a couple of things up and running. I'd like to get robots. Robots are the really big ones because it means a lot of these things like putting these belts along the bus, I can just tell the robots to do it and they'll just take care of it. Uh, it means I can go through and just fix these mistakes, leave the ghosts in place and the robots will just, like I said, they'll just take care of things. They automate construction in big ways. It also means when it comes to putting down one of these pre-made blueprints, I can paste them down and the, again, the robots just take care of things. They're just Wonderful. All right, so what we want to do is we want to realize we're so out of gears, it's not funny. Uh, we want to... What do I have on the bus? Coal, which discontinues. Then we have steel, and then we have red circuits. So then, you know what? We're going to add right about here. Batteries. Okay. So we have batteries on the bus. We have other things on the bus. The next thing I want is, I want another research. I want, go back to there. I want another set of uh, research. Yeah, another one of these. All right, so we want to put down, this one here is utility science. And with that, we're going to put our production science right beside it. Now, the reason I want utility science is actually this component of it. This component here makes robot frames. Robot frames are the one thing that we're actually looking for. And that means I want to get this hooked up now. I'd like to have robot frames now. I'd like to be starting making robots now. So I just need this part of the build. Everything else is fine. I can get to that later, but this is the part I want right now. So that means I need steel, which is conveniently right above me. 
So we're going to bring in steel. Uh, you might notice that the start of this build it looks uh, pretty much identical to our chemical science. Because it is. The main component in electric engines, funnily enough, are engines. So we've just duplicated the build right here to provide our engine engines. Uh, and then on top of that, we are direct inserting them straight into the electric engines, which are going to need lube and green circuits, which we'll grab in just a second. Uh, there, there, there. So then I can do long handed, long handed, long handed, long handed. We'll grab those two, those two, those two. Uh, your upgrade. Oh, damn. I didn't grab any more of those. Okay, so we do know from previous experience that you need to go a little bit faster. I thought I hooked up a power pole. No? Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, so let's start with steel. Steel should be easy enough. We drag the belts up. We slice that off. We slice that off. We put that in there. Put that down there. Put, oops. That to there. That to there. Done. Okay. Uh, steel also comes in here. So let's get... Let's just get these hooked up, okay? Having them hooked up doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, also means I can simplify my life by just running one belt at a time and feeding them into all these silly things that they need to be hooked into. So let's get steel running to there as well. Uh, batteries, turns out batteries are needed right here. So again, we'll just... Hmm. Put a kink in the build like that. Uh, advanced circuits, are they needed? Nope. We've got iron and gears. Gears are right here. So we want to have a gear right there. Which is then going to come down to there. Then down to there. And then into there. Uh, iron. Always a power pole in the way. Always a power pole in the way. Uh, hook that belt in. Iron is. <sighs> Thanks, research. Uh, go away. Uh, that one. Right, iron, that should get that part running at least. Now. Yeah. You guys are going to require a few more materials to get the electric engines running. They're going to require, according to this, they require green circuits, which should be easy. Uh, we're going to have you go over, you go... Oh, oh whatever. Just maximum reach this stuff. Uh, green circuits into... Uh, where's the splitter? Right there. Uh, you and you copy all those across. Okay, so it's green circuits hooked in. We need a bunch of inserters, which I'm out of. And we also need a lubricant pipe. Lubricant pipe, we left basically here. So my choices are drag that across, which is not that bad. Or drag it across here at the acid level. I think we're going to go with acid level. But it does mean I need to run all the way back and start it from that end rather than dragging it from this end because reasons. Uh, same time. Go away. So satisfying. So satisfying. All right. Uh, we want to grab you guys, you guys, uh, you guys, you guys. Uh, obviously, some of those as well. Pipes. Now I've got plenty of pipes on me. Uh, Alright, so we need to grab our loop pipe and keep running it forward. Yes. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Uh, if I take it down a tile. Yes. Now. I am definitely not the best at planning. I'm going to be the first one to admit that. Definitely su suffering a little bit in the planning department. But, I don't care who you are. I don't care how much planning you put into your base. Unless everything is one continuous blueprint, things are going to come up. Situations are going to happen. Like cliffs in the middle of your bus. 
there comes a time you just got to learn how to work around things. Uh, like this. I'm going to have to underground from there to there and there to there to get a pipe through the middle of my red circuits. I was definitely planned 100% well with the uh, acid pipe and it wasn't sheer luck. Uh, we want to grab that and I want to just drag that down to right where bouts where I am so I know what I'm trying to hit. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't sheer dumb luck. It was definitely planning on my behalf. So, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter how much planning you have. There's always going to be something. There's always going to be something. And I think with Factorio, it really pays to just improvise every now and then. Okay, just accept, hey, crap happened. That's fine. We're just going to build around the problems. And that's one of the reasons I really like the game. Okay, so we're going to go... Actually, we're going to go four inputs, same as we did with red circuits. And then I'll swap every second one to an output. Uh, done. Okay, so we're going to have electric engines eventually. Next thing we need is going to be these guys, which are the flying robot frames, which actually just need both those resources, which we've already plugged in. A bit more power. Uh... And we should be able to get some flying robot frames, which means, hopefully, before the episode's done, we can get some robots flying through the air. Okay. We want all of those. We want all of those. This is a roundabouty belt that goes around, 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 around. And I want an assembly machine right there. You, assembly machine, are going to have one job in life, and that is to make... Uh, construction robots, which luckily require robot frames and green circuits, which we have right here. Okay, so we now with the, through the magic of construction, we're going to have some flying, and we're going to have some robots. Next thing we're going to need is a robo port to put them in, so they have somewhere to nap overnight. Uh, research. No, we'll do research in a second. Okay, so back to our workshop. We did make, earlier this episode, uh, robot ports. Cool. Uh, at the same time, we did also automate these, the passive provider chests, and these, the storage chests. Yeah, storage chests we did cover earlier. And... No, we'll worry about that in a second. Um, all right, let's get a robot port down. Let's get a couple of robot ports down. So, first thing I want to do is I want to put down a robot port exactly beside this machine. And the main reason I want to do that is I want to have this machine be able to put robots straight into the robot port. Uh, that power pole. So, we're going to give you an inserter. And you're going to put robots straight into the robot port. Cool. Now, first thing about robot robots is they let you build things. So, as you can see, I have a whole pile of belt here. If the robots had some belt, actually, let's do this properly. If I put down a passive provider chest that the robots can access, and I put nine belt in there, robot comes and picks up a belt and flies off with it and does things. It builds things. It starts self-building the base. This makes such a difference, okay? It's such a difference to your Factorio game. Now, as you can see, a robot port has two squares in it. One there being the orange square, the orange square. That is the logistics range, okay? There are two different types of robots. There is the construction robots, and there is the yet to be researched logistics robots. The construction robots actually operate in the green range. The green range is where they can go and build things, okay? So as you can see, one robot port, very, very good coverage of your base. If I take a second robot port and I slap it down over here, let's say, and give it power, and I tell the robots to build, um, what's something we won't have? Guns, no, I don't have guns. Hey, let's start with these chests. If I tell them to build a whole bunch of those red chests, and then I come to this red chest, and I put some red chests in there so the robots can access it. <sighs> Nothing happens at all. Okay, that one's got a green range. That one's got a green range, but the two robo ports are not linked to one another. If I take another robo port and I put it here in the middle, see we get these lines. These lines indicate that the logistics network, that in the orange area, is connected between the two. 
So if I put that there and power it up. Come on, guys. Take off. Do as you're told. Hey! Look at him go! Okay. So, they're going to go put those down for me. I don't really want them there. The catch is, now they have crap in their hands, so to speak, that they can't put down. Um, yeah, in their hands. We're going to go in their hands. It definitely looks like they have some hands at the front. So, what they need is they need a storage chest. If I put in a storage chest, they can take the crap that they've got in their hands and dump it into storage. Okay. We now have storage. Awesome. And then they're going to go back to napping. Now, obviously... I've created a problem. I've created one significant problem, okay? That they are gonna put, oh, this in, uh, assembly machine is gonna keep putting robots in here forever. I don't want infinite robots, okay? Infinite robots is bad because each robot port only has room for 350 robots to live. And obviously if I've got 5,000 in the network and only one robot port for them to sleep in, bad things happen. So what we can do is we can make a little bit of wire, just a tiny bit of wire. I'm gonna hook the wire from the inserter to the robot port. If I click on the robot port, we have a couple of options. We can really read the logistics network contents. Cover that later, it's a later problem. We can also read the robot statistics. That's what I wanna do. And I wanna say available construction robots. So if I hover my mouse over this, we can see we have zero out of zero logistics bots and I have 45 out of 45 construction robots. So we'll put down that chest again. I'll fill it full of belts. And we can now see we have zero of 45, okay? What I want to change this to is I want available robots. So the Z signal, uh, we go to signals. I want Z. If Z is less than 50, I want you to keep inputting robots, okay? And as we can see, that first number keeps popping up. Uh, but the second number is still, well, no, the first number keeps popping up from, you know, zero, one, blah, 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 as this makes, you took the robot frames, come back, you took away my demonstration, get rid of that belt, have those. So, we can see that that zero number ticks up occasionally, and then 56, 58 is the total number of robots in the network. What the... Available construction robots are is that first number. Okay, so if I take all those out, we're going to see that number is going to count up because they have nothing to do. When that first number gets to 50, that little green light on that insert is going to turn to red. Bang, red. Okay, there is more than 50 available construction robots in the network to do stuff. Okay, so they're out of jobs, they can go put all that stuff down and leave us alone. All right, so. We have our very first set of robots. Uh, I'm gonna put one belt there so that keeps running. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna carpet the base with robot ports. So we're gonna put a robot port here. Actually, no. Next thing I wanna show off is how to cheat the robots. So, you might be standing around. You might not have any passive provider chests on you, but you want the robots to go do something. Actually, you, go away, fly away. All right, so what I wanna do is I want to tell the robots, if I go to map view, I wanna tell them to put a robot port right there. They don't have any robot ports on them. What I can do is I can take a robot port, I could build it and then deconstruct it. A robot will come along, it'll pick it up. It'll find it has nothing to do with it. In a second, it'll work out that we need one over here and it will wander over there and place it. There we go. That works. Except for argument's sake, you wanted to make like a thousand belts. Putting down a thousand belts, deconstructing a thousand belts is a pain in the butt. You can hold the Z button, which we covered earlier. That's what we were using to put the ammo in the guns. And hold the Z button on the ground and just dump the belts on the ground. Like all the belts. Just dump all the belts on the ground. Make yourself a mess. We can then use the deconstruction planner to mark that for deconstruction. And hello, robots will come clean up the deconstruction. They'll, they'll go do the things. And then what they're going to do is they're going to fly off to special places and put down the belts if you have orders to put down the belts. If you don't, they're going to fly all the way over here to put down the belts because I have orders over here to put down the belts as well. So, like I said, uh, we want to cover the base in robot ports. The main reason we want to cover the base in robot ports is, one, we want to be able to access central storage over here. Uh, two, we want to have a complete robot port network so we can order the bots to do things for us. Uh, that one, that one. Uh, that one. You're missing a power. Uh, that one. Character is in the way. Character should move. Uh, that one. 
Get another power pole. Okay, robots now can access more of the base. On top of that, robots use so much power. So you've been warned. Uh, I'm going to pick up that, and I'm going to pick up that, and then we're going to go here, and we're having a green circuit problem. So we're obviously going to line up our blueprint, hold down the shift button, drag, and drag. And at the same time, I do have an upgrade planner here. We can upgrade from crappy assemblers to better assemblers and drag. Oh, look. The robots have jobs to do. Uh, eventually, they'll wake up to themselves. There are some of them off doing things. Uh, there is a debug overlay. Logistics robots on map. So, they have a little bit to do. There is a few orders when it comes to this base of things. There's a bit of copper cable in that thing. How did copper cable get into the thing? Not a clue. That's not possible. And yet it happened. Okie dokie. All right, there's a bit of construction task around the base of things for the robots to do. Just, just a little bit. As you can see, they started putting down storage chests. They're going to start putting down central storage. At the same time, remember this wooden box that we spoke about earlier? I want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of it. I'm going to mark it for deconstruction because I put them all in one central area. Robots will take care of it. Same time, power poles. They don't have access to power poles. Have some power poles, please. Uh, in fact, craft 280 power poles. Have all the power poles. Uh, it also means I don't have to worry about carrying nearly the amount of crap I've been carrying around on me. On me. Uh, same time, we can also go to our workshop. Uh, why did it, oh, the blueprint books has rearranged itself? Oh no, that's 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 not the one I want. I want that one. Okay, so we have this upgrade planner. This upgrade planner is going to upgrade all the important boxes to the other important boxes. So it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to upgrade all the slow inserters that we've been using previously to faster inserters. At the same time, as you can see, it's going to upgrade every single steel chest in the network, well, in this build to a uh, passive provider chest, which means the robots can access them. Okay, so it means the robots can now access train tracks and train signals, but more important things like chemical plants, Roboports, uh, refineries, um, power poles, repair packs. They can go repair the damage that has been caused by somebody and they're accidentally putting a grenade in the wrong spot. Um, they can repair all those sorts of things. At the same time, it's going to upgrade a lot of the inserters to fast inserters. Uh, you and you don't need to exist still. Um, so it's going to do a lot of upgrades there. On top of that, it did also upgrade... Where was it? It also changes over any iron chests to storage chests, okay? These are what I call a poor man's requested chest. So if I put one here, uh, I need to actually do all of these. It's going to be so slow. The robots are so slow. Actually, speaking of robots being so slow, let's definitely get... Where's the tech I want? Work at robot speed one. Work at robot speed two. Go. Uh, hot air balloons. This is what we, we call them at this stage because that's about the speed they run at. Uh, where are those storage chests? One there, one there. Uh, I think that's all of them. Hang on, we'll just double check by dragging this over a second time and looking for any more chests. Nope, it's they've done everything's oh they've been marked for upgrade but they might not necessarily be done okay robots are getting a little bit faster slowly very slowly okay we want to grab our workshop blueprint and we're going to roll it to our next version so our next version is chemical science because we have some chemical science done we can dump down the blueprint again which is going to cause my issues with red circuits for the 15th time. Uh, let's just fix this permanently. Bring that in there instead. And I'm going to pick up that because before it causes a problem. All right. I can't get the next one because that requires utility science. Obviously, I don't have utility science yet. Uh, we can get a personal robot port. So that lets us have robots on us. Big 
difference, okay? Then we can run around, we can just get robots to do stuff locally, like outposts, if we go out to an outpost. Rather than having to have the robot network stretch all the way down there, we could just have personal robots on us that will just get things done locally. Uh, okay, I think that's done. But what this should have done is upgrade all this chest to what I refer to as a poor man's request chest. A poor man's request chest is a storage chest that has a filter on it. And the idea of the filter is if the robots find a random yellow belt somewhere on the map, they make sure it goes back into this chest. The reason I wanted to go back in this chest is because this is the chest that's linked to this inserter, upgrade it to red belt. Uh, same goes for splitters, same goes for undergrounds, same goes for a lot of things. Uh, over here we had assembler mark ones, same story. It's got a filter on it. So if we were, they're already level two, they're level two, that's all level two. I've already upgraded everything to level two, so it doesn't really work. Oh, this is not level two. Uh, upgrade planner, all of that. So it means this assembly machine is going to get picked up as a mark one. You're flying over with a mark one. You're going to get to somewhere and go, I can't build it there anymore. I'm going to bring it back. So if we hover over this chest, we can say there's one to be delivered, one to be picked up. And they're going to come back and they're going to make sure that they put back all the tier one assemblers in this box. Because this is where I want this box, them. I want them in here so they can get upgraded to a tier two. So, like I said, poor man's request chest because I can't actually request things out of the network currently and make sure they go to a set area. Um, yeah, we don't have that technology yet. We're not that smart. So, also means I can dump a lot of the stuff I've been carrying around on me forever and put them back into these chests. Um... Because I just don't need to carry the same amount of material I had around, I, I, had on me originally. I can, in a lot of cases, just walk around and blueprint things, and then they magically appear. Um, that goes there, that goes there. Pipe, 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 pipe. Okay, the pipe chests are not done yet. Uh, recap. Uh... Okay. Uh, is it due to a lack of chests? It's due to a lack of chests. Good news. I happen to have a crap ton of chests on me. That one's done. That one's done. That one's not done. That one's not done. Oh, they're substations. That's what that is. Uh... So substations are cute, they're handy, they're like a power pole, except uh, they just have a very, very large reach. A very short wire reach, so they're better than a medium power pole, worse than a large power pole when it comes to actual distance. But they just power a very large area. Very, very good for when you have a lot of things that you want to power up close to one another. Uh, we'll put those back in there. I've still got 11 of them left. You know what? I'm sick of doing this manually. Where are our red chests? Red chests are here. Uh, we're just going to dump all of those in there. And you're not running because you don't have any steel. We don't have any steel because... Steel build? Steel build. Okay. So, continuing with our list of things that we can now do. We can also now upgrade all our furnaces to steel furnaces, please. Drag that upgrade planner over there. Tell the robots, hey, I would like all these things to magically upgrade to the next level. And once I give them cliff explosives, they'll also deal with those sorts of problems with for us as well. So where are my roboports? Roboports! Roboport there. And a roboport. Let's put one down here. I will take power poles and we're going to run them across to this build. Yeah. Uh, roboports. I definitely want them in the oil area so they can upgrade oil next time we need to upgrade oil. Uh, I'm going to put that there because that should be outside the range of bad things that will happen if you put things too close. Uh, it's on the border. It's fine. Uh, I'll put one here. Uh, put one. Hey, look. Repair bots coming over to fix our things. Okay. Okay. So this one's cliff explosives. Obviously I'd like to upgrade that to a passive provider chest. So again, I'm gonna use my upgrade planner. That way I can just signal to the bots what I want them to do and they'll magically come over and do it. So I'm gonna change that iron chest over to a passive provider chest and then therefore 
they can pick up cliff explosives and make problems go away. Uh, same time, guns. I don't need those guns anymore. Buy guns. Uh, coal. We're bringing coal up like that. So I want to rearrange this coal to get probably a second iron line in to make steel. Uh, but they're all things we're probably going to do in the next episode because I just realized how long we've been running for. But then again, we got robots. Like, robots make such a difference. As you can see, like, green circuits, they're done. The robots just came and built the build. Uh, they've gone and filled in the gaps in the bus that I hadn't done. Uh, we're going to put down a steel build in the next episode. Again, I'm just going to rely on the bots to come and get the build done. Uh, we have a stone belt, which I've left all the way back there. We're going to copy that. Copy that. And I'm just going to run the belt up to about there somewhere. Uh, obviously, we need robo ports in the bus. So again, robo port, power pole. Uh, as I said, this is why generally there's a four tile gap in the middle of people's buses. So they can run two things. They can run power and they can run robo ports. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to slowly fill out our bus with... Robo ports and power poles and have the robots do everything for us because they're our personal little slaves. But with all that said, uh, I'm finished playing around for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, do hope you're enjoying. Hope you've definitely learned something along the way, like how awesome robots are. We didn't cover the logistics robots. We'll probably cover those in the next episode. They're a different type of robot. They serve a different function um, in some regards. It's probably the more important of the two functions, but for right now, um, they're going to be remaining for next episode. Anyway, with all that said, I do hope you guys have enjoyed. As always, I do hope you guys are learning something along the way. Um, no real blueprints to speak of in this episode, so can't really tell you about my Discord, but I can invite you to join it anyway. Uh, at the same time, I can remind you, look, like the video. If you like the video, click the like button. If you really, really enjoyed the video, share it with a friend. Um, it helps. I know a lot of you guys have made comments about um, the quality of the videos, which I very, very much appreciate it. And... Uh, how I should have more subscribers and I totally agree with you and therefore it's up to you guys to share the crap out of the videos tell everybody else about the videos make sure everybody else knows about this series so they can watch it too so hopefully they can learn a thing about Factorio or too anyway with that said I'm out thank you guys for watching see you in the next one bye